Hello. Well, this is part two of uh, my appraisal about John Campbell's videos. And I guess the first question anyone would want to ask is, well, who are you to be able to think yourself capable of making an appraisal like that? So I think I'd better spend a couple of minutes explaining who I am and why I think I'm competent to make an appraisal of Dr. John Campbell's videos. Well, first of all, let me say my name is Roger Coghill, and I mentioned before that I was a biologist, um, and my biology degree uh, was from Cambridge University. Here is the um, certificate. But uh, that's a master's degree. Now, you might think, oh, well, that's better than just being a BA, but it isn't really. In Cambridge, you only have to stay out of prison for two years and they'll give you a master's degree after you've got your first degree. Well, actually, my first degree was my second degree because my first degree and the degree I got when I went up to Cambridge in 1958 was not for biology. It was for classics, Latin and Greek. And I got to be an open scholar in Latin and Greek, which you might say, well, that doesn't equip you to appraise medical uh, expertise. And you're quite right. Because what happened was that I was so young when I went up there, and uh, in fact only 17, that I was going to be coming out of university with the usual three years uh, work uh, before I was 21. And that would be a major disadvantage because at that time people did national young people did national service for two years and so I would be coming into the jobs market age 20 without having done that but competing with many of the graduates of that time who had done so so I decided my best plan was to ask the university if I could switch from classics and do a second degree in natural sciences. Well, they all thought I was mad, of course, but they said, well, <laughs> we think you're mad, but if you want to do it, then you've got to do a long VAC term, that's a work during the summer holidays, and you've got to sit the examination just like everybody else. And if you pass and we can give you a degree, degree qualification, then we will do so, but you've got to sit and compete with all the other people who've done much more natural sciences than you have. I said, well, okay, fair enough, let me try. I did try, I did do a long VAC term, and I was amazed at the end of that when I'd sat the examination to get a senior exhibitionership, not just an ordinary place. And that's how I got my, my degree in biology and how I got my master's in biology. You know, that's not really everything. The other degree I have is in environmental management. Now, that I got from a different university. That one I got from the University of Wales. Um, and that was another three-year course. But it did give me a very good handle on environmental issues, which I think are important when you're looking at epidemiology. And although I'm not an epidemiologist, I did add on to all that with getting a certificate at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine under uh, Michelle Coleman there, who had previously been, I think, the um, uh, leader of the national statistics uh, of the country. So those are some of the um, qualifications I have. Um, I have other m minor ones. For example, I've got a what's called an M. Phil from Surrey University. In fact, I did a PhD there, but uh, I decided that the uh, examiners weren't really competent to examine me. Therefore, I submitted the degree in writing and it was subsequently published in the peer-reviewed literature and so on. But I never actually got my doctorate. I didn't need it, to be honest. I wasn't going to be in academic uh, circles. Uh, so why bother? Uh, anyway, I did all the work and that's how I got the 
qualifications in that field. Well, that's fine. You know what they say. They say, oh, well, those who can do and those who can't teach. But um, I would like to then uh, tell you that for 30 odd years, I ran my own laboratory. I built it from scratch. Uh, by the end of our, our time, and by the time I came to retire, I had uh, all the usual equipment of a good lab laboratory, microscopes, GCMS, which is gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, and PCR, which is polymerase chain reaction, all those instruments in the lab, which we use to do our various studies. And okay, fine, anyone can set up a lab, anyone can get the equipment, but you then still have to do the research and you have to produce of qu uh, enough quality of research to have it published in the peer-reviewed literature. So I did. And um, the, uh, for example, here is one of the uh, studies that I published in the Proceedings, the International Seminar on the Effects of Electromagnetic Fields on the Living Environment, uh, sponsored by ICNERP. Now that funny name stands for the International uh, Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. And they obviously felt my work was of sufficient quality to publish it, my papers in that kind of journal. And, and that's not the only one. There are others as well in, in peer-reviewed journals like The Biologist or Biology, as they used to call it. So there's all that. Now that would be fine, okay, you've got the practical experience of research, you've got the academic qualifications for research, but you've got to be able to tell people. And that's what I then did. I actually wrote 10 books on um, matters related to my uh, expertise. So for example, one on electropollution, one on the healing energies of light, one on uh, telenature. I actually, after I retired to Madeira, which is where I thought the safest place was, um, I wrote a book on the butterflies of Madeira too. So, and you'll find most of these are in um, places like Amazon and Kindle. So that's another way of saying, well, look, I do qualify and I am competent enough to do a an, an, an exposition and an appraisal of John's work. Um, and then finally, I also organized a number of conferences. For, uh, one in the Royal, two actually, in the Royal Society of Medicine, who invited me to be a member. Now, I'm not a doctor and I don't want to be one. I, I was flattered but I, 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 uh, that I was being invited to be a member of the Royal Society of Medicine but I didn't take it up. And then I did another emergency conference at the Royal Society, which is a very venerable institution in London, who allowed me to have my conference there um, about uh, the, effect, the effects of um, uh, radio frequency and microwave radiation on human health. Um, now, now, actually, I have another connection with the Royal Society because way back hundreds of years ago, well, the, one of the founding members of that society was Sir Christopher Wren, the well-known architect who built St. Paul's Cathedral. Well, um, he married my ancestor, Faith Coghill. And they had a little boy, called, also called Christopher. And it was Sir Christopher Wren who actually built the chapel of Emmanuel College, Cambridge, where I took my degrees. So there we are. That's all I want to say at the moment. But I do think it's probably useful for you to know a bit about me and uh, to, therefore, I hope, take these credentials, uh, which comes from a Latin word meaning to believe in somebody, uh, and you will believe that I am able to do these appraisals. And that's the end of part two. And I will begin the appraisals in part three. Thanks for listening.